Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We welcome you to our, you know, to our webinar, DGS 103, Contracting with California State Government. So this webinar is being recorded. The link to the recording and presentation will be emailed to you. If you have any question, please type it in the chat. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Move to the next screen. Can I have the next screen, please? Yes, ma'am. Next slide. Thank you, Michael. So, to learn something, you know, a little bit about yourself, we want to know, you know, we have some survey questions for you. So, the first question is Is your business established? Do you have an EIN number, the employer identification number? Do you have a business credit? line of credit. Have you done business with the state before? So please take, take a minute and answer these questions. Thank you. Okay, we are reading. Okay, great. So finally, we have their scores. So about 75% people have established business. That's great news. So also, all of you who have a business, you all have employer identification number. It's even better. Do you have a business line of credit? So 25% people said yes, and 75% said no. I, maybe they are not ready for that, you know, uh, the loan or the credit line, but you know, we are also here to guide you for that, okay? So the question number four is, have you done business with the state before? Wow, nobody has done business with the state. 100% people says no. So today you're gonna be learning a lot. How, you know, as a business owner, get opportunity to work with the state, you know, with your state, with California state. So today we have a special you know, guest. And then also before I give it to uh, the guest, we have uh, the, <clears throat> our score uh, distinguished leader, Peter Fong. And uh, I would like to introduce him. So can, can I have next screen please, Michael? Okay, so I would like to Peter Fong to step up and do some introduction for himself and bring the guest. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jess Bree. Um, it's a real challenge uh, doing business today, whether you're doing business with the state of California or just doing business period. Um, we have kind of solidified a program with the, uh, the DGS and Michael, who'll be your presenter today, to get you through that process in preparation. Um, everybody wants to know, regardless of your business is like what one knows your capability study or business plan. You've now established a business, but can you deliver your products and services? And what we wanna do is assure those that do become certified to do business with the state that you are prepared to do business. We have formed about three buckets, what I call a bucket of must attend uh, interactive uh, workshops that we can help you do that process. So if we can go to the next slide, Michael. So the capability study in contracting is we call completing a, a capability study, which is also a business model of Canvas. You're gonna receive a copy of that today, okay? Don't worry if you don't know how to fill it out because we're gonna sit down together about your business. We want to put your name in there. So June 1st, save the date, it's 1 to 2 p.m. We're going to spend a couple hours uh, uh, with you. Uh, it has 1 to 2, but we'll spend a couple hours with you as long as it's needed. However, we want to be sure that you are ready uh, with the, what we call a business model canvas. And fill in best you can. Don't show up with a blank piece of paper. Even though you may not know, you should know some of the different elements of what you need to provide. Uh, to start your business. Due to COVID, insurance and bonding and loans, 
these are all FICO score driven. Too many businesses uh, can't get a loan or a line of credit. If you receive a $250,000 contract um, and you need to hire an additional six or 10 employees and you don't have the money to do payroll, you need a line of credit. So we're gonna have a banker in the room, we're gonna have an insurance bonding agent in the room, and we are gonna tell you the needs and the requirements uh, so you be sure you, you have insurance and bonding and loans and most importantly is what we call workers' compensation insurance. And that is uh, rated by your payroll and um, your industry. So if you're an office worker and you get a paper cut, that's one thing. But if you're a roofer and, and doing framing work, you're subject to a lot of injuries. So know, know, your, know your options in there. That's great. You started your business and we do not put what we call a, a marketing budget in there. What type of marketing do I need? Do I need a website? Uh, is social media right for me? Uh, social media is driven by demographics. So yeah, I'm gonna use this and that, but you need to know what they are. So we'll have a marketing basics expert in the room to help guide that through you. So armed with this knowledge and not only that the knowledge, but the where to, and we will connect you with a mentor that can uh, take you through the process uh, so you're not doing this alone. But we're not gonna do the work for you, but this will give you the opportunity to set up a basic foundation uh, so you can become a successful bidder in doing with the state of California. And just in general, having a sustainable business in today's marketplace. And now it's my pleasure to turn the program over to Michael Gillio and uh, for today's webinar. And uh, please enjoy yourself and we'll see you at the end. Thank you, Michael. Hey. All right, let's start my video, or at least my picture so everybody can see me. And here's a picture of me over there on the PowerPoint. But first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you here today. And I hope that you find value in the information I'll be sharing. One of the things that came out in the, um, uh, questions were EIN, you know, employee identification number. As far as the state is concerned, you know, we use either your employee identification number and or your social security number. Either one works for us uh, depending on the size of your business. But my recommendation, instead of putting your, uh, it depend, you know, if you're a sole proprietor, not a problem, but we recommend that you probably reach out and get an EIN number, even though uh, you don't necessarily need it for the state uh, regarding a small business that is uh, the more complex your business yes the EIN number is required nevertheless let's move forward so my name is Michael Aguilio I work for the state of California in the procurement division in the office of small business and disabled veteran business enterprise services I am the uh, I handle outreach and also uh, what is that? DEI, diversity, inclusion, uh, and equity. So we're trying to make sure that all people, no matter race, color, sexual orientation, uh, and so forth, are included in state procurement. All right. So what we're going to be talking about is actually step three in a three-step process. Step one was how to do business with state of California. We went over several items. Uh, the three certifications, the benefits of certifications, uh, and what are required to actually get certified. Step two was certified. Now what? Okay, I got all the stuff that you had quite, you know, brought out in step one. What do I do now? Now that I'm certified. So we gave you some hints about marketing, who to reach out to, uh, and other uh, information that you can use to enhance your ability to find opportunities. Now, apparently, according to the information that everybody put in there nobody's doing with business with the state of california my question is is everybody has anybody tried to do business with the state of california so that will you made my follow-up to that one so if you want to throw that in the chat you know please let me know all right so we have simple objective today we're going to understand how to state procure understanding how the state buys is important for your success and then we're going to navigate the contracting process by showing how that all works so here are the topics, you know, how the state buys, 
you know, the small business preference, the DVB incentive, and the commercial use of function, you know, and then we're going to go over contract readiness, you know, common mistakes that people make so that you don't make them, and then some tips for success. Finally, resources. Well, our resource partner that is hosting today, SCORE, has one of the most comprehensive websites that you can look at and has all kinds of great information for you to enhance your ability to be a uh, not only supplier to the state of California, but pretty much for your business as a whole. Uh, as uh, Peter pointed out, you know, they're talking about putting a capability statement together, your business plan, and if necessary, they can help you find financing. They have a myriad of opportunities uh, for you to find information through their entire network. So that's one of the best resources that I know of, and that's why they're hosting today. All right, so how the state buys. The state buys in several ways. We have uh, contracts exempt from advertising, which uh, are important for you because we have fair and reasonable, less than $10,000, and I'll explain how that works. We have the small business and DVB option. What is that? And of course, emergency purchases and our new um, small business emergency purchases database. Okay, so the state does not advertise all its buys. Okay, just so that you understand that. So when you're going to market yourself, you got to realize that the state doesn't advertise everything. For instance, fair and reasonable, less than $10,000. The state doesn't advertise any purchases pretty much under $10,000. For the most part, they don't have to. All they really have to do is go to the database and get at least one quote, you know, for commonly used procurements, you know, short time, whatever we need it for, uh, and get one quote. So they go in a database, they call two or three people, if they or at least one. And if that person can provide a quote that is less than $10,000, then they can award that contract. Now, the buyer must prove, though, that the price that they're receiving is fair and reasonable. That's why they call it fair and reasonable. Now, how do they do that? All they have to do is prove that they have bought this item before and here was the existing price. So now they have a price comparison they can make. Is it advertised somewhere, TV, radio, um, ad, ads? Uh, I don't see too many newspapers out there, but if they see an ad, but all they have to do is prove, and they have to document that proof that it's been fair and reasonable. They can make a purchase under $10,000 by only getting one quote. Okay, so that's pretty huge in the sense of how you can get involved. The other thing that is not advertised is the contract from small business and the use of the DVBE options. Now, the option is a platform where buyers can utilize small business. It is a huge benefit for you as a small business owner because what the state does, it goes into its database and they get, has to get at least two quotes, either two small businesses or two DVBEs. Uh, and not one and the same. Many DVBEs or disabled veteran business enterprise that are certified are also small, just so you know. So what, this, what the state says is that under a quarter of a million dollars, a penny less than a quarter of a million dollars for good services and IT goods and or services, they can award a contract to that value. Now, the public works has actually gone up $333,000, and I think it's going up again. But you need to realize that as small businesses, the state just goes out and get two quotes out of the out of our database, and then we award and can award that amount. That's huge for small business because only you are competing against another small business in the same category that they are in. So it's pretty much a head to head. It's important that you understand again, marketing is the key to success. Now, who do I market to and how do I market? We'll get that later on in this presentation, but it's something that you need to understand and SCORE can help you with. In fact, they had that little thing on some of their classes, all right? It was, I think, the third class in June. Emergency purchases are other things that aren't advertised. When the state needs something in the case of emergency, and many of you are watching the news lately, I just happened to see it this morning, California, especially in the Sacramento region, uh, is prime fire danger. I guess they have fire warnings. So in this case, let me read it perfectly as it stated, is a sudden unexpected occurrence that poses a clear and intimate immediate danger requiring uh, immediate action to prevent and mitigate the loss of impaired of life, health, property, and essential public services. 
when we need it, we go get it. So we have a brand new item here that I'll talk to later. It's strictly for small businesses only. Huge for you. Now, the other way the state buys, other than non-advertised, it's usually advertised in some form or fashion. And here are the ones that I want to speak on. One is leverage procurement agreements, otherwise known as LPAs. Now, there's several types of LPAs. There's CMAS, California Multiple Awards. The CMAS award schedule is based on the federal government's general price schedule, GSA. All right. In order to get a CMAS, you have to be a part of uh, the GSA schedule that the federal government has. All we do is convert that into the California version. A lot easier process once you have the hard thing that you got to do with the federal government. Master service agreements, cooperative, software license agreement, and statewide agreements. These are all LPAs. Now, LPAs are multi-year contracts that the state has entered in with a supplier. Many of these contracts have large suppliers embedded into them. However, we require many of the large suppliers to subcontract some of the work to certified small business in order to get the preference to be a part of these LPAs. It's important for you to understand that and to look up what an LPA is and what we have, see who's participating so that when they come up for renewal, you can actually bid on these as a sub to whatever prime that had it last year or anybody else that may be looking at it. So the other thing is request for information. That's one is another way of we buy invitation for bid. A lot of you've heard these before request for proposals. And the last one is request for uh, quotation. Now let's start with the request for information. Here it is. The request for information is pretty much a survey. So when the state is trying to buy something, in this case, let's just use a high-speed rail because it's going right through Fresno. A high-speed rail, initially, we were looking for and trying to survey the marketplace to see who can actually build the high-speed rail. Is there any interested companies? In that aspect, we put on an RFI, Request for Information. Now, this request then people who are interested or can supply their information for an IF, RFI, request for information. Once the request for information was done, then step two would happen is usually an RFQ, um, RFP, request for proposal. So you have to participate in one in order to get to stage two. But that's what an RFI is. It's just usually a stepping process to a bigger way of what we're looking for. So it's usually an RFI, to an RFQ, so I'll you know request for uh, not request for proposal RFP, request for proposal. So the other one that we have is an IFB, which is the invitation to bid. It's you know commonly and routinely for services, but one of the biggest key is the small business and the DVBE incentive are usually applied to the IFB. So if you look at here, nine IT goods not exceeding a hundred thousand dollars always awarded to the lowest bidder. Um, you know, there's no discussions, no uh, negotiation. Uh, so we're just inviting you to bid. Here's what we want. How much is going to cost me, right? Pretty simple on the IFB. Uh, here's what I was talking about earlier. We have a request for information. Once we get a, a body of people who are, okay, yeah, we're interested. Then we put on a request for proposal. Now, the request for proposal is that we have this thing we want. You tell us how you're going to build it. What is it going to be? How is it going to be made? All right. So it's pretty straightforward. The thing that we have here, it's formally advertised on our website. All of these are advertised for the most part. But here, when you're looking at this, when we come to request for proposals, it's not an easy thing to do. There's a whole bunch of packages, a whole bunch of information you have to uh, submit. But if you look here, primary is low cost. Secondary is best value. This is the only place that I know of in state procurement where it's not always the lowest cost. You know, we always buy the lowest cost, lowest bid. I should probably say lowest bid, lowest bid, lowest bid. However, when it comes to request for proposal, it can be best value, which is not always the lowest cost. So everybody's always asking, Michael, man, is always the lowest bid? No. And this is the only exception that I know of. All right. So just so you know. In this case, 
in many requests for proposals, they're usually large contracts that we're putting out there. But when we put large contracts out there, we always require, in most cases, I should say always, and I say most cases, that's an oxymoron contradiction itself. There is a requirement for major primes to subcontract to smaller businesses. So like the high-speed rail project, the state goal for 25% inclusion of small businesses in that project was actually increased to 30. So what I'm saying is, despite the fact that we have large companies building the high-speed rail, they require to use small businesses as a part of their process to build this high-speed rail. And that's what we asked them when they submitted their proposal. And when they won their contracts, they have to use small businesses. If you go to the high-speed rail website, there's a lot of information on who's been used, how much money they're making. The first phase, phase one, Tudor Perini, Zachary Parson. Phase two was uh, Dragado's Flatiron. Phase three uh, was uh, California Rail Builders. And I think they're working on phase four. I haven't been keeping up. I used to be very involved in doing the outreach for that. But once we got it started, um, now the ball is rolling pretty quickly. So this is just a recap as the last part is that it's formally advertised on Cali Procure. Now the quest for quotation is usually common in formal competitive solicitation. You know, dollar threshold is generally $100,000. We're just asking for a quote. Most of the times it's usually an RF, a IFB invitation to bid, but just so you know that there is one last type of request for quotation. Now all of this information is easy to find. All you have to do is go to Cali Procure. This is our website, as you can see here on the screen now. Everything that you wanna know about what's happening in state procurement, what's available to you is on this website. So if you go anywhere else, you're starting in the wrong place. Right here under quick links, you can find state contracts, LPAs. Now this is why it's so important is because you wanna make sure that you may wanna participate in these multi-year contract as a small business subcontractor to these larger LPAs. All right, so if I scroll through here, you can just look at the types. Remember, we just spoke about some of these, uh, CMAS, cooperative, state price schedules, all of these are LPAs, multi-year contracts, the state enters in with a particular supplier. You can look up the supplier IDs. There's all ways that you can look at in regarding to LPAs. So when you're trying to find some information, you can use all these search functions. You know, I, I do IT. Well, okay, then you just look for IT. If you're not IT, then you say non-IT. This will make sure that the information that you get is a lot smaller for you to look at. The more information you pull, put in, it drill down a little bit more. However, you don't want to make it so constricted that you miss the information that you want. So you want to start broad and then lower and lower and then, you know, look at information as it comes out to where you can sort Okay, so start broad and then work your way smaller. Okay, so the other thing that uh, is important for you, one of the things as a supplier or, or potential bidder on state contracts is to understand that you have to opt in for information for the state of California. When you're looking at these solicitations that are coming out, one of the things that happens is if you really want more information on, okay, I'm interested. But in order to follow any changes to the contract and information that is coming out, you have to opt in. Many people forget to manage their notifications and don't opt in. We are required for purposes so that we don't send you junk mail, although you may get some every now and then. We're trying to minimize that. So you have to opt in, as I've been saying. So what you want to do is you go down here under your you have to log in using your username and password. Now, here's the thing. In step two, we showed you that in order to access our system, you can actually access the system. Everybody can look at it. I can look at it right now. However, in order for you to build your online profile, in order for you to have more access to the entire system, you have to do two things. One, at least register on the system, all right? So once you register, things change. Uh, the other thing is, is you get certified as a small business. If you got certified as a small business, DVBE, uh, or small business doing public works, we talked in the previous uh, work class, you can see that things have changed. So when you log in, just generally, if I log in, you won't see this part right here. 
at the very bottom, it says, welcome to your work center. When you logged in, created an, uh, a setting for yourself, you got a username and password, you are certified, it'll take you right to your, this is your workspace. You have access to make augmentation of what, what state buyers will see or anybody else who might be going through our website. This is where you can actually edit your account, change names, add names, uh, manage your code certification, what we're talking about, right? Change your password if necessary, assuming that in some cases, you know, you hired a employee, they're in charge of maintaining your website. They have since left. You definitely want to make sure that your password has changed. All right, so manage your certification. You click enter and you just type in, well, you don't actually type in your drop down menu. You just say yes. The other thing that we have here is the California State Contract Register. That's where we find all the solicitations that are being advertised. You definitely want to say, yes, would you like to receive event notification with the CSCR? So what happens is when you fill out an online profile with the state of California, these are little reviews. You would ask to put in not only your keywords, but your UNSPSC codes, United Nations Standards and Products codes. When your code matches the code that we're using for a solicitation, in other words, we start typing, this is what we want, this is what we need. Here's the code number associated with the product and our services, code numbers or numbers. The system looks through the entire database. And if your number, your UNSPSC code matches the one that I put in for the procurement, we system automatically sends you emails, assuming that you say, yes, you'd like to have that information. My recommendation is to turn it on. So every time we're going to notify you or some an opportunity come up and our our key UNS UNSPSC code match, you automatically get an email. You definitely want that. If in fact, and you can change the parameters uh, on notifications. So this is all for you to change back and forth. You can also add your areas of. Uh, you can choose the entire state. Yeah, I can work anywhere in the state because I'm shipping stuff to you. If you have a, um, a service-based business, then you may want to choose what counties that you want to work in, all or some. So you can download here. You want to work Al Alameda, anything else, it's, it's there for you. There is a lot of information that's available to you if you decide to accept and or set up. It's important that you understand that your profile on the state's website is key to your success. So the more information you put in about what you do, in other words, the uh, keywords. So I am a submit. I have submit. I lay submit. I can sell you submit. Um, all of that, all the things that, you know, rebarb, all of this stuff that you have for your business, you want to put in keywords. So if I'm looking for rebarb, you come up. And if you un don't understand how to look at something else, is you can actually look at other profiles in the system. All you got to do is type in construction, and then all the construction firms come up. You can look at their keywords and or UNSPSC codes. That's a really big hint for you. Sometimes you just need a little thing to jog your memory or see whatever somebody else has. And if you're doing the same thing, you definitely want to make sure what they have, I have, because it comes down to is answering the bell when the bell rings and to provide the information when we ask for it. Okay, so it's really important that you want to be in the ring, fighting for your opportunities, as opposed to being on outside the ring because you didn't know it was even happening. Okay, so what I was talking about earlier was the Small Business and Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise Register. Now, this emergency register is only for small business participation. So when the state goes into an emergency mode, what happens, now the buyer has a platform to where all if they to use small business here are all the certified small businesses that have a register in our emergency register we're trying to make sure that you're not overlooked now it's a dedicated portal as it says right here uh, for businesses that are ready to supply services in an emergency situation now, unlike e cali procure which has all of our businesses this is strictly for small business to be and we have predetermined categories, right? So you're gonna sign up, you're gonna describe what you do, you're gonna choose which category you're in uh, and state buyers can access this pool of suppliers, which is you. Now, who should sign up? Well, as it says right here, 
you have to be able to provide emergency services, right? In other words, we should be able to contact you around the clock. So somebody's got to be available with a telephone number so that we can call when we need something. Now, that's one of the prerequisites. Of course, being certified as small is another one. The other thing that you have to remind, I have to remind you is that in order to get uh, into the system, you have to have been registered or certified at least in our system for at least one day. And then we can move you in because everything is double checked. So it takes a day to review everything. Now, here's some of the categories. Now, we're adding categories all the time. So we got base camp operations, traffic control, you know, medical, all of this stuff. If you're in this area and some more, we're adding more. So just take a look, add your categories. Now, here's what you have to do in order to register. You're going to need a certification number. Of course, you have to be certified small. Choose emergency categories, you know, describe what you do, your business address. We want to know, you know, where you're located in case we have a fire in Northern California. We're trying to make sure that you're close so that it doesn't take you eight hours to provide whatever services. But nevertheless, we may use you anyway, uh, to, as long as you can get that in a timely manner to where we're at. Contact, you know, we have the primary, of course, a, a, an emergency, so an after hour person. So, you, you know, that person doesn't have to be the same person, but they have to answer the phone 24 hours a day. Uh, so you have to shift, you know, if you shift, you need just two numbers. All right, so here's, here's easy stuff. We have the website, which will provide this PowerPoint to you on um, how to register. And of course, if you have any questions about the emergency register itself, please send us email. You may see categories that you think we should have and don't have. Send us an email, let us know what you think, because then maybe we'll possibly add it. Now, here we get down to the, the nitty gritty about things. If you're looking at how public agencies buy, we're pretty much all on the same page. We all use RFPs or some type of invitation to bid as well. Uh, we do have master service agreements. Many uh, cities and counties have a master service agreement for things that they use on a regular basis. That way they don't have to buy over and over. They just go into the contract and then people just pick up what they need from that contract. For instance, uh, let's just use uh, bottled water. You know, we have a contract for two years. We need water. Boom, it's, it's just uh, available to you. One of the things that I also want to point out to you, despite the fact that it's a state contract, Many of our LPAs, leverage procurement agreements, are used by any public agency, like whether it be the city, county, that spends public money. So they have the capability, and many do, decide to use the state's contract for some of their needs, because then they don't have to go through all that work of putting out the bid, maintaining it, making sure it's running right. They just buy off the state's contract. So if you're lucky, and you do the little due diligence that we talked about earlier, and you get one on one of these LPAs, either as a prime vendor and or a sub, you know, you're, you're getting constant work. Hopefully, you know, we need the products and service. Of course we do because we have a legislative procurement agreement. All right, so here's the thing. One of the things that we want you to understand is that if you're bidding on something and you say, yeah, I can do that, but it's not your core function, I think I can do that you probably don't want to do that in your business strategy. One of the things that I recommend that you do, Peter had pretty much talked about earlier, is to sit down and create a business plan. You want to know where you're at and where you're trying to be. If in fact your core business strategy doesn't involve, like you're in accounting, but you want to do uh, carpentry, that doesn't equate. So make sure that if you're going to do that, you have the capability of doing that. So have a business strategy. Well, in our case, we're not going to hire an accountant and do um, uh, carpentry. Now, the other thing is, can you respond? If we need it, can you do it? And more importantly, this is the last bullet down there is your financial capacity. When a state enters into contract with you, one of the benefits that we have is the state pays you faster than we do other businesses. We normally... But there's a window here, 45 days of the undisputed invoice. So if there's no dispute on an invoice that you send to us, normally we get it back to you. Sometimes, for whatever reason, we're a little slow. The rule states 45 days. So what I'm trying to tell you that you have to be financially ready to do what the state of college. You'll get your money. And if we pay you late, you'll get even more. But we're trying not to pay anybody late because you don't want it to be late anyway. But you have to be financially ready to cover all your expenses so that when you get the money that the state promises you, you're good to go. 
So that's financial capacity is huge. Can you deliver? If you can't deliver and you're like, yeah, I think I can. When you say, I think <laughs> you probably should not. All right. Do you meet the client's requirements? If I send it out there, and this is what I want. If I said a red cup, you better send me a red cup, 16 ounce red cup. Did I ask the shape? No, I didn't. We probably will have the shape, what it looks like. But is semantics. If I say red, you better send red and not blue. That's the way the state works. You got to be specific to what we have. The only way that you can change that is to ask the questions. Now, here's one of the big keys about doing contracts with any public agency or with anybody. Always ask questions. When in doubt, when you have any sliver of a doubt, ask the questions to ease your mind to make sure that you are meeting my requirements. If you don't meet my requirements, then we reject you. You don't want to be rejected based on the technicalities. Yeah, hey, look, my, you want a 16-ounce solo cup. I said red, but you send me blue. It's the same cup, just different color. Well, yeah, that's true. But you didn't meet my requirements, which means red. All right, so the type of contracts carry different risk. Like, for instance, an IFB, invitation to bid, simple, straightforward process. I want this. You send me the uh, price. We enter in the contract. Request for proposal more complex, greater risk, you can make a lot more money, but you got to evaluate what kind of risk tolerance do you have, okay? You can make a lot of money, but we also can put you in a hurt, especially if you're not financially ready or you cannot deliver on a contract when we ask you to, okay? All right. Now, determine your uh, eligibility can, you know, there's criteria that we have. Do you have the required skill set? Do you have past performance? We ask all of these things. Now, as I said earlier, you definitely want to use a resource. It's one of the resources that I spoke to you is SCORE. Now, here's the quintessential things that I want to go over. These are what state buyers has told me some of the mistakes that suppliers like you make. You don't want to have these mistakes. Now, here one, the state of California requires you to send or send, sign all documents. Now, one of the key factors that the state is trying to do to improve your chances of winning, because we want to get a completed package from you. We have, so use it, a checklist. So when we put a solicitation together, we include usually a checklist, which will tell you, hey, don't forget to sign here, here, and here. Don't forget to submit this document, this document, this document, all of that. Use a checklist to ensure that you follow all the directions and you just check it down the box. One of the biggest things is you, some people just forget to sign. Now, one of the biggest signature block is that, hey, are you a certified small business? You should say yes if you are. If you don't, we may not give you the preferences that you had as we explained in uh, session one. You get a 5% bid preference. You won't get that unless we know you're small. Re you know, Regrettably, you don't return all documents. Even if the ones do not apply to you, you have to return them back. Say you saw it, you initialed it, or you signed a document and said, no, not applicable. If you don't resign it and you don't return it because you don't think it's applicable to you, boom, automatically rejected. Of course, not meeting the deadlines. Deadlines are always out there. You should, for most of the ones in, in the state of California for Department of General Services, it's usually two o'clock. Now here's the deadline. The deadline is not when you mailed it. The deadline is when it's supposed to be in my office at that time. So no matter what postmark, no matter what time you sent, it doesn't equate. It's the time we stamped it in our office. So just note, get it to our office on the time that we want. One of the biggest issues that we have too is historical information is available for you on pricing. If you do not look at the pricing that was available for you in our database to say, hey, look, we bought this apple, Michael Red Apples. How much did it cost us? Let's say we said, hey, Apples, we paid three cents on the apple. Now you know what the price, historical pricing is. So if you say, hey, I can sell you apples for 10 cents, we're going to look at you like, what? What's, what's the difference between the specs that I gave you and the one you just apply? Or let's say I'm paying three cents. You decided to give it for 0.5 or half a cent. Now you're losing out on money. One of the biggest keys that we find is that you have not taken a look at our historical information to determine what our price is and where your price should be. 
incorrect calculations. You know, I I wish I could make a, move my uh, decimal point a couple things over and get more pay, uh, but you don't want to make that mistake. You know, we don't want to. You you're saying that it's going to charge me a hundred bucks, but you move the decimal point and, you, and then in your bid it says a thousand. So just make sure that you take a look at that. Permits, bonding, uh, license. They're all required at the time of your submittal. Now, sometimes, nah, I wouldn't play with that. You definitely want to make sure that they're all upkeep. All right. So when well, we check, because if we check, we check to make sure that you are licensed or permitted or bonded to do the work. Now, I just said this earlier, you can't substitute any item unless you get prior approval. So you can, if the cup is red, you have blue. Same cup, just different color. You just got to make sure that we say, okay. What happens if I say, okay, I got to let all the other bidders know that I'm going to accept a blue cup instead of a red cup. So they have an opportunity to bid on either color. Um, not following all the directions. That's pretty simple. I already told you that's the checklist. One of the biggest things in there is recycle content form. This is the one that I alluded to in the very beginning. If you don't sign that document and say, no, it's not applicable and return it, then you're automatically rejected. If we're looking at requests for proposal, we expect that you have your proposal in one package and your technical requirements. We want to evaluate them separately. So we look at, here's what you say you can do. Here's what's going to cost. Remember, requests for proposals are not only best value, uh, our lowest price is also best value. So that's, we want to just make sure that we evaluate appropriately. Here's some tips for success prior to bidding, you know, keep your profile updated. If anything changes, you add services, you subtract services, make sure you, you know, do that. Make sure that you stay certified because it's really impossible, well, not impossible. It's highly improbable that you can get recertified in a timely fashion in case, you know, you see something come up. So you want to just keep this updated all the time. The other thing that I have here is prior to bidding, you just make sure that you're licensed and insured. Okay, so don't miss uh, your opportunity to try to do it last minute. You're gonna make mistakes. One of the other tips that I have for you is always use your, uh, your partner or your resource like SCORE. If you want them to look at your bid prior to submittal, they probably can do that for you. Or you wanna have information on other things that you need help with, but always use your, your partner. They're there for help you. One of the things that SCORE has for you is they can help you up with a mentor. Uh, I don't think uh, um, Peter spoke about this, but there is a mentorship program that they can hook you up with. The other thing that here is that, you know, funds are 45 days late sometimes. You just got to make sure that you have the capa uh, capabilities of paying your staff, keeping the lights on prior to getting your payments. Uh, there is some things here. Most of the times, we provide payment on uh, completion of the task or completion of what we have. Now, there is a contingency depending on the, the product and their services where you send this much, we pay that much. Uh, in most cases, uh, you just got to be, be aware that sometimes if you don't, you send us an only half, but we're still waiting for the other half, we don't pay you in full until we get the entire product unless there's a contingency bid price that allows that to happen. Most of the time we're doing stuff electronically. Just got to know that. Everything that we do is on Cali Procure, unless it's uh, one that are not advertised, but all information is shared. So a lot of electronic bidding is happening that way, uh, or at least we're moving to that feature. Right now it's both where you have to submit bids via either internet and or package, depends on. So you got to read that really closely, all right? The general provisions basically tells you all kinds of information that you have to meet. Some of them are, you know, drug-free workplace. You're, uh, you don't discriminate. Some of that special provisions are in there in some cases. Just make sure you take a look at that. You know, watch out for LPA updates. I spoke to you earlier. Take out the look at the LPAs. The LPAs, leverage procurement agreements. If you are a person that can provide some of that service and you are small, you may want to look at let us know before they come up for rebidding. All right. I already told you. Use that response checklist. Use it, use it, use it. The other big thing is always ask questions. When in doubt, ask a question. All right, so if your business, uh, you have to be, you know, you have to promise that you don't have to. You promise to deliver something. If 
we get into a contract with you and you cannot deliver and or you want to break your promise, there could be some repercussions for you. So just remember, when you get in business with the state of California, yes, you can make a lot of money, but you have to be ready. And one of the best ways to understand if you are ready is to sit down with your score representative to ensure that you are ready in all capacity, whether it be financial, business, or your plan represents what you can do. Now, here's some of the big keys that I have for you. The state is offering, if you want to sit down with me for, you know, just talking about your business and your business only, how you can get certified, you missed the first two classes, you want more information, all of that, we offer online bookings. You can book an appointment with one of our counselors, similar to what you can do with SCORE, and we can talk to you, you know, on some basic uh, improvements for your business. So we can help. There's a lot of things that we cannot do, we're forbidden to do. One, of course, is looking at your bids that SCORE can do, uh, give you insights on how to place your bid. You know, there's a kind of a fine line of what you can and cannot do. SCORE is not restricted by some of our procurement guidelines. We have a QR code. For those of you who want to use that, you just scan that and then you can set up your appointment. We're trying to bring uh, the state into the 21st century. The other thing that we have is some resources. We have Cali Procure. That's where I showed you earlier. Uh, we have the outreach section. We record these webinars similar to, well, I don't, not this one particular, but we do have pre-recorded webinars uh, that you can have and look at. Our, uh, some of our resource, other resource partners, we have the SBA link. Procurement Technical Assistance Center, NorCal PTAC, uh, all of these. And of course, you had SCORE, which is coming down at the very next slide. But these are all resources, links that we're going to provide to you. Uh, and here you got SCORE, you can find a mentor. There's huge for you. There's a lot of information that's out there. One of the things, you know, we're kind of running out a bit close to time. Here are some of the webinars that we will allow uh, SCORE to talk about. One of the things that I want to bring out to is the one on May 26th is meet with buyers. What we're going to try to do is I'm going to bring to you, for those of you who want to come back on May 26th, an opportunity to meet some of the buyers within the state of California to talk about how to get in contact with them, how to uh, find some of the resources that they have, and also what they are buying. So they're going to try to, I'm going to try to get and bring a list on a, what I call a look ahead report. Things are going to be coming down that they're buying that nobody knows about yet. And that's coming on May 26th. All right. So I want to go back, take it back to uh, SCORE, and they can talk about the rest of the upcoming webinars. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was what a wonderful presentation. A lot of powerful information. And I'm sure that all of you know our attendees, they learned a lot today about how to conduct business with the state. So if you need to learn more about doing business with the state, Michael Agallo, he already gave you some references. And then also with SCORE, we have all the, uh, you know, all the sessions because this is session number three that we did today. So if you want to learn like how to certify with the state, that is a session number two or session number one, I think actually. So you can record, you can view the recording, you can listen to those and learn more. Okay. So we have some upcoming webinars and uh, like Michael Ayello said, May 26th, meet the buyers, May 27th, uh, Google make your, uh, your website work for you. So, you know, if you want to learn more about how to expand your business and how to use Google for your business, that is a great uh, workshop that you sh maybe should register for. And uh, June, nine, June 8 is email marketing. You know, there are so many ways to promote your products or ser services. So that specifically talks about how do you promote your business through using email marketing. So that's a great web, uh, you know, workshop that, you know, if you want to learn more about that. And June 16th, franchising opportunities for veterans. If you are veterans and looking to do business, you know, especially getting into franchise business, that it, I think it's you know good something good to you know learn on June 16th. And June 21st is how smart business can leverage credit cards. So you want to know how to you know um, you know finance or refinance your business. Uh, that that's uh, you know another web. Uh, workshop that's coming up and to learn more about different workshops, different webinars, resources, we have 
the website listed. Uh, that's the cent www.centralvalleyscore.org. And that is the Central Valley School program. So with that, you will get, you, you know, you will learn like a local workshops, okay? So let's, uh, I think the next screen, please, Michael. <clears throat> okay, so like Michael already mentioned, um, you know, if you need help with uh, any kind of your business planning, if you need like a financing or you need marketing or you need like a financial projections. So we have help for you. You know, as a score platform, uh, we have lots of lots of different subject matter experts to help you. To request a score mentor, you can go to this website, www.score.org, uh, you know, forward slash find mentor. The mentor can help you with all your basic business needs. And uh, we can give you some strategies, some ideas, and some tools, resources, some webinars, some templates, especially to you know make your life easy as a businessman, okay, or businesswoman. So, so that's that's you know if you need a mentor, please you know don't uh, hesitate. You know, request a mentor. Especially you know it's a uh, it's great to learn more. You know, the more you learn about your business, the more you're gonna find out, and the less risk is you know involved if you learn more about your business. Okay. So that is also with score. And then can we have the next screen, Michael, please? Okay, so I think that's the polls. Okay, so the survey questions. So we have some, uh, some poll questions for you right now. So the first question is, did you receive a certification number to do business with the state? So if you don't know what that means, that is doing business with the state. And that was the, uh, the session number one and session number two, um, how you get certified with the state, okay? So you can go and listen to the recording and uh, find out what to do for the, you know, to get certification number. Okay, the question number two is, would you participate in a live interactive webinar to create a capability study to do business with the state? And that is another great program that, you know, we would like to know, you know, because we're having a workshop, we are having a webinar next week, and we wanna know like, uh, you know, how much uh, you are prepared to do the business with the state. So that's where we will, you know, you know, take all your concerns and everything. So we would like to know that. Number Question number three is, would you participate in a live interactive webinar for financing, bonding, and insurance resources? And of course, you know, all businesses need, you know, financing, bonding, different type of insurances. So we, we would like to know, you know, where you are at this, um, in your business stages. And number four, that would you participate in a live interactive webinar, how to market your business to the state? So please take a few minutes and let's answer these questions. Okay, so we have the answers. So did you receive the certification? Okay, so 100% people, everybody says, no, they don't have the certification. So, you know, maybe you need to, um, you know, see if you are, you know, if you are in the, um, you know, if your products and services are, you know, available for the governments or, you know, uh, how, what you need to do to get the certification with the state. Okay. So the question number two was, would you participate in a live interactive webinar? So about, you know, most people said 70, 60, 70% uh, 70 people said yes, they would like to, you know, um, be uh, participating in the program where we can do create um, capability study to do business with the state. So that's good. And uh, there is a, you know, uh, number question number three is, would you participate in a live interactive webinar for financing? So yes, 67 people said yes, they would like to. And uh, there is 33% says no, maybe they're not ready yet. So we'll wait for you. And question number four was, would you participate in a live interactive webinar, how to market your business to the state? And look at that, everybody is ready. Everybody is ready to do the business with the state. That means Michael, uh, you know, you did great job today explaining how to conduct the business with the state. And with that, I think, um, you know, we wanna, uh, I don't think we have anything else to, you know, we have uh, some questions and answers, of course, to, you know, 
at do. So let's say, um, you know, this workshop, I think uh, it's the, just the wealth of knowledge. You know, a lot of people like uh, we as a business owner, we never know what's available outside, you know, what are opportunities for us. So just learning, uh, joining uh, associations such as SCORE, I can, it, you know, it can help you to reach, uh, you know, to become established or successful business owner. Okay, so let's have Michael, I think Michael Agallo, he's right. gonna do some questions. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm gonna ask some, I'm gonna uh, answer all the questions that you have put in chat. One of the things that I, I can let you know that the question, I think it's important that all of you understand that despite the fact that you're gonna put a capability statement for the state, the capability statement can have actually have benefit for you on many multiple levels, not just for the state of California. Just recently, I put together events. Uh, of course, a lot of it has been virtual, but just recently um, we've had the opportunity. And in fact, I'm flying down to LA today after this uh, PowerPoint or after this discussion is over. We're starting to do in-person events. Anyway, I just had one a week ago. What I try to do is bring a lot of state agencies and all of our reciprocity partners, whether it be the city, county, um, local municipalities all in one place, which I did here in Sacramento last week. This capability statement you're putting together, I recommend that it has basic, you know, basic knowledge, uh, shared knowledge that you want on who you are, what you do, how to contact you, any past experience that you have. It's pretty much a one page document. It can be two front and back. I, I, I suggest that you don't do any more than that unless it's a, a, P, a PDF, a um, computerized and you have discussions like uh, you know we talked about. The fact is, is that creating this is beneficial not only for the state of California, but as marketing purposes for a lot of different reasons. So, you know, it does say, have you uh, want to sit down and do a um, uh, capability statement for the state of California? Look, you want to do a capability statement just as general for your business. So my recommendation is you sit down and do that. If you don't have a business plan, which is separate than a capability statement, you definitely want to do that as well. You want to know where you're trying to go. I see a lot of businesses, you know, they get certified by the state of California, but not to find any work. Well, they don't find any work because they're going around and around in the circles. Now, the first question that came up, uh, Ram K said, this is a big black hole. Need hand holding, please, or an example. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. You have score that can help you with illuminating that black hole. Or as I said in my presentation, you can sit down and create a one-on-one -on -one just to talk about, hey, look, I got questions, man. I got I need help. You know, how do I get certified? What do I need to get certified? I mean, those were covered in earlier classes, but the fact is, if you missed them all, you can either review the pre-recordings that uh, or the recordings that was made by SCORE because they keep all this stuff. Or you make one-on-one -on -one appointments with either one of us or both. You know, we're not going to say that you can't use either one of us as a resource. We want you to succeed. Uh, so, Mr. Ram, uh, Mr. Ram, oh, I should say Mr. Ram K, because I don't know if it's, a, you know, who, what, you know, specificality they might be. <clears throat> Reach out for help. We got you. All right. So, uh, Sanchez, uh, I'm having a hard time getting certified. I qualify for several. Minority woman, minority woman, but the whole, uh, but the people from particular services are, oh, no, no, no. <coughs> you know what? All right, don't pay nobody nothing. I mean, if you want to give away free money, just give it to me. I'm more than happy to take it for you. Certifications are free for the state of California. Now, uh, we don't have a minority or women-owned certification. The state of California, the way we have it, voters, uh, Prop 209, I think it's in, I can't remember what year that was. I think it was probably 209. Uh, I got to go back. Anyway, the voters of the state of California voted out what we called me be weebies, minority owned business, women owned business. What happens is now when we do business, when you're doing business with the state of California, we look at the size. So you are even when it comes to the size, you have this much money, these many employees, you're going head to head. Doesn't matter who owns it. Okay. It's just a matter of size, okay? So, and capabilities. So small business is small business, all right? Micro business is a micro business and you get that certification that is 
you don't have to apply for it's automatic delivered to you when you get certified. Nevertheless, what I'm trying to tell you is that the women owned minority certification is a federal earned certification and you can get that through Caltrans. So if you want to get minority certified, they have what they call a D B E disadvantage business enterprise certification, which covers all the women owned minority owned uh, LGBTQ, all of that certification is available through them. Doesn't cost you anything. It is free. If you want help, reach out to our partners, uh, you know, SCORE, Small Business Developmental Center, and or the PTAC. You know, those are resources available to you. Peter and his uh, staff can actually help you or guide you to where you need to be, but you don't have to pay a dime with help for any certification, okay? Like I said, if you want to give money away, I'm more than happy to take it off your hands. Uh, do you need a DUNS number? For state of California, DUNS numbers are not required. However, getting one is probably a good idea. If you're going to do federal work, you definitely need the DUNS number. Okay, federal government requires a DUNS number. State of California does not, unless uh, you're doing um, uh, your uh, manufacturer. Manufacturers, different story. All right. So you don't need that. All right. State of California doesn't require a DUNS number. Okay. Federal government does though, so you have to get that. Uh, is there a way to reach a specific buyer? I have downloaded a spreadsheet for a particular category from the e-procurement site. Have one, have a buyer name. How do I reach them for clarification or questions? All right, so that's a very good one. Uh, we have a lot of turnover for what we call advocates. Every state agency who has ability to spend $100,000 or more are required to provide me with an advocate's name. That advocate's name is put on the list that apparently you know where it exists, all right? That was in class two, by the way, where to find this list. Uh, how to reach out to them? My recommendation is you either call them because we provide you with their telephone number. If they don't have a telephone number, and many don't for this new COVID, uh, but they're accepting emails. I would send them an email uh, if, and say, hey, look, I would like an opportunity to speak to you. Uh, here's a capability statement and then reach back again. If not a couple days later, at least a week later, reach back, say, I sent you a capability statement. Uh, have you had an opportunity to look at it? If you haven't, or if you had, you know, uh, can we have an opportunity to talk, you know, and hopefully they respond. Now, here's the deal. If you are reaching out to an advocate and they don't respond to your queries, then you can send me their email uh, about some of the um, challenges that you've had, and I'll see if I can't find you the appropriate resource. Now, here's the other key that I suggest to you. As a supplier looking to talk to an advocate, if you go into the, using the Cal eProcure website, you can his, use our historical database to find out who actually brought your bought your product and services. My recommendation is that once you find the buyer, you find also the corresponding um, advocate. So when you send out information about who you are and what you do, you include both of these people. Now, most of the time, the buyers will not reach back to you. It's the primary responsibility of the advocate to pre-screen all suppliers for the state of California and then reach back to the buyer and say, yeah, they're good. They're certified. Uh, I did some research on them. That's how the function starts. It's advocate to the buyer. However, in some cases, my recommendation is you send them both the email uh, so the buyer can see and the buyer may reach back to the advocate and say, look, I got this email. Have you looked at this stuff? So it ensures that communication has happened throughout the system. Uh, that's a little hint that I recommend that you do. It's something that most buyers don't like. Okay. Uh, don't tell them I'm telling you guys this, but oh, shoot, it's on recording. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm out. Uh, meaning I said this out loud. That's what I recommend that you do. Uh, if you're having, again, if you're having issues, reach back to me and I'll see if I can't fix the, the problems that you're having, okay? Now, how do you get certified with the state of California? You're independently owned. If you're independently owned and operated, meaning uh, you can't be a, a subsidiary of a larger corporation. You have to be independently owned. And many, um, uh, you know, somebody came to me, what was that? It was... Uh, Dog A and W, that's what it was. Somebody said I own an A and W. I go, okay, great. You're a franchisee. Well, they own the business. 
Now, if you were not a franchisee, then of course you, you've got an issue. Anyway, you have to be independently owned and operated. You have to have, you know, a hundred or few employees and you have to make less than $14 million. Now, all this stuff is going up, by the way. With inflation, these numbers are rising in regards to the qualifications of what needs. Now, the easiest way is you go down to Cal e Procure. Uh, if you go caliprocure.c.gov, right on that front page, it says it'll teach you just follow the directions on how to get certified. Just say get certified, then it'll start asking you questions. There's two forms to do. One is the get registered with a username and password, and I spoke about that earlier. And secondarily is to get certified. All this process takes you about 45 minutes, assuming that you took care of what the prerequisites are, which we share to you prior to your certification. So before you get certified or start going through the process, you definitely want to make sure that you one, you have the federal ID number, or you have your social security number, you have to show us that you have been in business uh, at least a day uh, and you are a, has a business license, you know, all these little things you have to have, if you have a business, what is the license number of your corporation? What is the secretary ID number? All these little things are on a list that are available to you when you go to the Cali Procure website, gather all that information, then fill out the application. It'll go a lot faster for you as opposed to get to the question and realize, oh, I got to go look something up. We give you a list. So it's all available for you. All right. So we'll see. I had to pay from my, okay, that I don't know what that is, L-I-C. Uh, or is that supposed to be lick as a word? Uh, if you can expand on that, I'll see if I can answer that question. Otherwise, that's all the questions I have in the chat. Uh, if you have any more, please reach out to Christina or I wish I could say your name. Just just breathe. Yeah, just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, just breathe. Oh, I had to pay for my license. Well, yeah, of course, you have to pay for any business license. No business license are free, except now here's the things that I know a lot is that if you are a veteran in certain areas, your business license can be free. So these are a lot of little tidbits that uh, is available out to you that you may or may not known. You definitely have to pay for all business licenses in any city or county that you work in in order for you to set up a business, a bona fide business. That's the only way you're going to get certified by the state of California is that you have to have at least a business license. Uh, all right. So that's all the questions that are out there. Oh, I, you are a vet. Okay. T.W. Jameson, my recommendation is you reach out to CalVet, calvet.ca.gov. Let them know that you're a vet uh, and you want more information on how you can proceed being a vet in the state of California and how to do business with the state because they got a lot of different programs for you. I have a friend over there. His name is Daniel. He can hook you up with a lot of information. So, you know, send me an email and I can send you a for your email to Daniel that he can hook you up with information regarding veteran services for California-based vets. All right. So thank you for your service, T.W. Jameson. We really appreciate that. Michael, I sent you my email. Could you find the email address for a specific buyer? I could. Just tell me which one you're looking for. All right. Anything else other than that? Just print. It's back to you. Thank you, Michael. Wow, my gosh. That was, you know, great question answers uh, the session we had, plus the presentation. And uh, we want to thank you so much, you know, for your valuable time, and uh, especially also our attendees. And uh, I think as a business owner, um, you know, the what you're doing is the best, you know, you're investing time to learn like uh, learn about different opportunities or different, you know, like uh, options to expand your business. And that is the great thing you're doing. And uh, I think with that, I don't know, Christina, do we have any other questions or, uh, you know, any concerns that somebody needing right now? No, it doesn't look like it. I uh, just want to thank you, Michael, also for, um, yes. you know, yeah, yeah. Putting on this great presentation, this whole series. Uh, we're looking forward to next week and yes. I'll get back to you on, coordinating for Wednesday, Michael. Yeah. And you have a safe flight over to LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I want to thank everybody who attended. I know that was we didn't have a really big crowd, but it allows us to have a little more time for Q&A. I know I have a couple more minutes. Obviously, we're going to be finishing a little early, so I give back some more time for your day. I want to thank you, and I wish all of you who are on the call today or at least in this workshop, you know, whether you're finding business with the state of California or 
any one of our partners within the state, which we call them reciprocity partners, the whole idea that we want, you know, just pre um, Christina or SCORE as a whole and in the state of California, we really want you to find success in your businesses. Uh, and if there's any way that we can help, please reach out. There's one thing that I do ask from all of you, if you found information valuable, um, and even if you did, what I would like you guys to do is to pay it forward with a random act of kindness to somebody else. Uh, we can always make this uh, life of ours a little bit special by sharing a little bit of kindness. All right, so thank you very much. Just pray this all on you. I'm calling it a day uh, so I get to the airport. <laughs> okay. <Bye. laughs> thank, thank you, Michael. Everyone. Thank you. Have a safe trip. And right. uh, thank you, everybody.